Kia ora, find your billion. It sort of sounds like a dodgy, get-rich-quick scheme for teenagers. <laughs> but you'd be pleased to know it wasn't anything like that. In September this year, there were 600 teenagers that converged on three cities. They wanted to make a difference to a billion lives. That's what Find Your Billion is all about, making a difference to a billion lives. Now, this is the first time that Find Your Billion has been run across a country, and it was here in New Zealand, first workshop in Christchurch, or Tautahi, of course. What it reinforced for Chris and I was that the young people have to be involved in this conversation. They are deeply engaged and committed to making a difference to the planet and to the challenges that we face. They care that two and a half billion people don't have access to clean water. They care that one billion people don't have access to health care. They care that 1.4 billion people don't have access to electricity. And so over the course of the, the day workshops, the young people were introduced to what are called the global grand challenges. There are 12 of them in the singularity suite. These are just three of them. But then they were asked another question. Out of all these grand challenges, which one are you most passionate about and that you want to dig more deeply into? So they went to their spaces and they formed teams with other people that were engaged in the same passion of a challenge. Now, our sponsors were really key for this because this was about access. We wanted to ensure that all young people could take part if they wanted to. So regardless of location, regardless of financial um, circumstances, regardless of uh, ethnicity, gender, we wanted diversity in the room because this is about the voices of the young and it's also about equity. Now the young people of today are sometimes referred to by Singularity University as the exponential generation. These are the ones that have been the, the subject of the conversation. We live in exponential times, and the exponential technologies that have been talked about in this program are fundamental for them to be part of and to understand. As part of the day, the, the young people were also it, they had a chance to experience these exponential technologies to find out a little bit more just as a taste of what that might look like. But then they were asked to dream big. What would it look like if you could use these technologies to make a difference to the planet? And they worked in teams thinking quite deeply and, and some really intense conversations because you imagine there's a lot of diversity in the room. So different backgrounds bringing really different things to the equation. It was a really a, a amazing time, actually. They were asked to dream big for a very good reason, and we've heard about that earlier in the day about adaptability. You know, the things that sound as if they're the most ridiculous are often the things that are the game changers, the disruptors, and that's what they were aiming to do. So science fiction has the power to be the vision for science fact. So they worked together, they did some work on their individual canvases, but as they worked with the diversity in the room, I just want you to think about this one thing. Imagine being in one of the cities with 200 teenagers <laughs> in a room and asking them to work in teams with people they'd never worked with or met before. Sound fun? And of course it was. But we also said, oh, and by the way, we want to, you to talk about and to, to discuss and to come up with ideas for some really deep questions. So how might we uh, create um, from, from our most difficult obstacles, how might we flip those to become the world's greatest opportunities? That was the focus of our work. So during the course of the workshops, Christchurch, Wellington, and Auckland, we recorded some of the conversations. So this is the world premiere of the Find Your Billion experience.
today's been a really empowering opportunity to meet a whole bunch of passionate young people in terms of talking about some of the problems we face and then combining that caring nature with um, some really awesome knowledge about how technology is influencing our future. Um, what I've kind of figured out is that we need to be looking at much larger issues and not so local ones which we often kind of fall into the trap of in New Zealand. Well what I've learned today is that my generation has uh, found out how important uh, exponential technologies are in solving the world's biggest problems and how important our generation will be in actually solving this. Being at this workshop today has really opened my mind to how technology actually grows in the world and how that influences us, not just our own communities, but in a wider perspective. I think before today I, I felt like I was one of the only ones that was really um, passionate about wanting to make a difference in the world and I didn't realise that was, there was so many other people that really wanted to be involved in making a difference. My billion will no longer face the uncertainty or the unpleasant surprises that accompany genetically inherited diseases. My billion will have access to equal care regardless of geographical location. My billion will be understood by trustworthy, uncorrupt leaders who have the resources and solve the problems that people today face. So um, you've got a bit of an idea of what the event itself was like. Um, I'm guessing that you probably want to know a little bit about the sort of ideas that these guys came up with, right? Oh, overwhelming enthusiasm. <laughs> this is the future of our nation, people. OK, um, I'm having a little bit of a, oh, it's just a button, exponential technologies, eh? So um, one of the groups, they um, started focusing on healthcare and started thinking about the problems with organ shortages. So they came up with the idea of 40 printed organs that could actually be printed internally within the body by nanobots. Another group started thinking about space junk. This is junk that's really expensive to get up there in the first place. And they came up with this ridiculously awesome idea of creating this massive robotic space whale, swims through space, hoovering up space junk to recycle it to make up into alternative types of space hardware. Another group, not surprisingly, started thinking of politicians and empathy and using virtual reality to try and help people um, empathize with the people in their constituencies and also just to have an idea of being able to put themselves in somebody else's shoes and have an idea about the impact of their decisions. And on that same theme of governance, one group just said, well, let's actually just create a robotic dictator that simply makes no mistakes. And just to prove that we're working with just everyday New Zealand teenagers, one 13-year-old girl, when she was asked about what future she wanted to create and what she was going to do to create it, just simply said, I have no idea. I'm just planning on growing old with seven cats. <laughs> so Cheryl and I and the team uh, that was involved in setting these workshops up, we had lots of ideas of things that we wanted people to take away from the event. But what was really interesting was all the other stuff they took too. So they were leaving the building, exchanging Facebook details and phone numbers and things like this. And from the video, you heard them talking about the idea of kind of finding a group of people that they had stuff in common with. Maybe in their own community, they were isolated in terms of the kind of social consciousness and things that they had. But in this room, there was kind of 200 other people that were similar. As well as that, this idea that the future is not something that just unfolds and that we sort of take part in passively, but we actually have this role of creating it. And some of the young people that came along said it's the first time they'd felt so empowered about creating their own future. So those kind of things that I'm just talking about there were things that we took away and we're considering now when we're thinking about, okay, so what next? So we've got a little bit of a plan of what we're going to do to start off with. And, and the biggest part of that to start with is awareness. 
and making sure that every young person in New Zealand has an awareness of what exponential technologies are, but also how they're changing everything, from employment to the environment to the economy. And also how our young people think about their future. So they're not defining their future through a job title or a profession that may no longer exist, but they're thinking about who they want to be rather than what they want to be. Thinking about the types of problems they want to work on rather than the types of tasks they want to complete. But awareness itself is not enough. And just like all the people in this room, it would be kind of a bit pointless if we just came along and listened to these awesome speakers tell us this stuff and then went off back into the wild and kind of did nothing with it. And that's our thing for the, for the young people as well, to make sure that they're equipped with the information that they need, but then they can use that and actually do something and act on that knowledge. And that task itself is way harder. And it's not something that Cheryl and I, or this team, or any small group of individuals can achieve. It's the whole community that we need to mobilize for that. So we've been developing partnerships with people in business, people in education, people in the not-profit sector to try and help us, to help our young people develop the dispositions and the awareness to actually do this. Not just the skill kind of exponential technology awareness, but all the other stuff that's really, really important. The idea that we say dream big, but then help people know where to start. So I know a lot of us will be familiar with language like MVP and that kind of stuff. But also being able to empathize deeply with a person's needs that are very, very different from ourselves and explore different perspectives with the people that we're working with. Be able to have the fortitude and the grit to be able to take on massive long-term challenges and not give up. So it's partnerships that we're trying to, deal, uh, trying to develop, and it would be kind of remiss of us not to actually look at the potential in this room. So I want you to sort of think about this. This was a quote that was shared yesterday, and the idea that the best way to predict the future is to create it. And that's, I think, one of the biggest reasons why we're here at the moment. What better way to create the future than by considering the way that we educate our youngest people? So I want you to think right now, what can you do or your organization do to support young New Zealanders to grow this country and make it become better than it is and taking into account all the things that we've been learning? I want you to get your phones out, in fact. I want you to get your phones out, open up that app, find my name, Chris Clay. My name's Cheryl Doig. And send us a message and tell us what you can offer. Maybe it's an internship, maybe it's some skill development, maybe it's financial support. <laughs> Whatever it is, please get in touch and let us know because we're really, really keen, and I know lots of you will be too, to make sure that our young people have the capabilities and they've developed the network to face the challenges but also to embrace the vast array of opportunities that are at their feet. Thank you very much. Thank you.